sat down. Yeah. Oh. All right. Let's uh, call the uh, let's call the Tuesday Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, here at uh, 10 o'clock. Um, those who are able, please pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, is there any public comment for items not appearing on today's agenda? All right, seeing none. Uh, any additions to the agenda from any of the commissioners? No. no. All right, move on to the meeting minutes. Uh, minutes were okay? Okay. Right. We'll take a motion then. I'll move to approve the minutes from the meeting held April 2nd. Second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the meeting held on April 2nd. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Pose nay. Motion carries. We'll now move on to our proclamations. We have two exciting proclamations this morning. Uh, the first one is proclamation number 18 of 2024, proclaiming April as Belfont Union Cemetery Month in Center County. And we have uh, Brenda and Tom here to talk about it. So um, I'm assuming maybe Tom, you'd come up to the podium and Brenda, um, who's kind of blending into our chairs with the color of your, uh, your outfit, Maybe you could do a partial, right. partial turn, so that the uh, a little bit ahead, you can use that there we go. Good. So I don't know which one of you uh, kicks it off. Well, I will. I'm uh, Tom Calander. I'm the uh, current vice president of the Belfont Cemetery Association and the Union Cemetery in Belfont, uh, a historic cemetery with many notable figures um, from uh, Belfont and Pennsylvania at large. Uh, buried in the cemetery, it's 100% volunteer driven and runs off of donations and grants that we can uh, can collect. So uh, any awareness of what we're trying to do uh, to rehabilitate the cemetery, we have a lot of broken stones, uh, many different uh, physical obstacles to maintaining the cemetery. Um, so any awareness we can bring to that, we are thankful for and trying to get the, the word out that we need as many volunteers as are willing to come and help us. Um, so I appreciate your willingness to allow us to claim April as a month of our own. That's, that's great. A beautiful cemetery. Um, what additional comments do you have, Brenda? We have scheduled now during the summer uh, one Saturday a month as community work day. And it would be nice if we could get more of the community out there to help us mm -hmm. to make Union Cemetery as beautiful as Belfon is. What type of skills or what type of folks are you looking for to help out? Well, mow grass, trim. Mm -hmm. I actually, with my disabilities, was up Saturday and cleaned a tombstone. So, oh anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're willing to uh, help train anybody with using weed trimmers mm -hmm. uh, to clean the stones. We work with anybody. Uh, their time is the most important thing for us, so we're happy to uh, incorporate whatever they're interested in or their talents are to help beautify the cemetery. We plant flowers, we clean graves, we're in the process of restoring uh, about $12,000 worth of uh, headstones that were repaired um, in our section along Howard Street. And uh, we can hope to continue that each year. Um, so we have a variety of different um, tools that people can use. They can bring their own materials if they would like, um, but we're just very open to any help we can get. And, and Tom, I believe the reason why you need the assistance is the perpetual maintenance fund for the cemetery ended up not being so perpetual. Exactly. The perpetual care fund that was paid in uh, for many of the stones uh, are uh, completely depleted uh, many years ago. We are still an active, <coughs> excuse me, an active cemetery. So we do uh, somewhere between six and 10 uh, burials each year. And because of that, we're not able to be qualified as a historic cemetery. Um, oh. Uh, due to our continual operations. So uh, we aren't bringing a significant number of, of dollars in for new burials. Um, so it kind of has us in a, in a sort of a limbo um, mm. that makes it difficult for us to continue operating as we are. So that's why we need a lot of uh, donations, any grants we can find and, and so forth. Well, thanks for that additional detail. I didn't realize you were in limbo since you are still actively uh, interring people on the mm -hmm. site. You Correct. 
there's a lot of grants you probably can't apply for then. Exactly. We, we, we run into a lot of obstacles writing grants, and we have, you know, a, somewhere just under 10,000 stones. Wow. Um, over time, stones have uh, sunken into, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, into the soil, and so just this past weekend, I think we were able to uh, uncover uh, a couple of stones that have been completely covered up, and, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 that were mostly uh, uh, covered would be lost to time here uh, in mm -hmm. a very short time. Wow. Well, I know it's very historic, just above the hill from the courthouse. In fact, it's uh, most of the area, I think, between the courthouse and uh, the old center crest. Yeah, so we have 20, just under 22 acres. Uh, like I said, almost 10,000 headstones. We run from uh, behind the courthouse and behind the, the former jail uh, along High Street all the way up to Wilson. And then we have uh, a newer section along Wilson over to Lamb. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, uh, we own some property behind that uh, along Howard as well yeah. that we haven't yet um, interred anyone in and we probably would need to rezone in order to use that All space. Right. Um, again, more costs in yes. order to yeah. continue operating as we are. All right. Anything else, Commissioner Concepcion? Yeah, so, I mean, I think this is a really important effort both in terms of um, respect for those who are buried there but also maintaining our history so that we, you know, future generations can walk through that cemetery and see yeah. the... Absolutely. Yeah. We do offer tours. We have a number of volunteers uh, either that are on the board currently mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. uh, work with the board to offer tours. Um, we're very happy to kind of tailor a tour to someone's specific needs. Uh, we have uh, some historic figures in, in both mm -hmm. um, Belfont and Pennsylvania at large, including some that helped to form Penn State that are buried mm -hmm. in the, the cemetery. Uh, but whatever your angle is, we're happy to offer tours. We like to couple that with some volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of groups that will come in on a Saturday morning perhaps and work for three or four hours and then after lunch we'll get a, a tour guided uh, by one of our, our knowledgeable presenters for an hour, an hour and a half tour. Mm -hmm. So um, we're happy to do that for any group that wants to come hang out with us for a couple hours and do some work mm -hmm. and learn a lot about Belfont yeah. and, the, and the cemetery. Is this something that uh, older high school students who are looking to get community service hours in could participate in? Yes, absolutely. We uh, Currently, Mr. Maris from Belfont mm -hmm. High School oh, yes. uh, does a lot of tours and he helps us out sometimes. He brings a group of students, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I think typically in the fall around mm -hmm. the United uh, Way, uh, Dave Caring, mm -hmm. he typically brings students out, but we are welcoming of any students uh, at any mm -hmm. point. If they want to work with us directly, they can reach out to us. Uh, our website's BelfontUnionCemetery.com, and they can connect with us about, you know, if they have certain needs they need to meet. Currently, we're working with one Eagle Scout. He's going to be restoring mm -hmm. a pump house on our property that we are able to use for storage of stone cleaning and repair tools. Um, we were able to purchase uh, a large 55-gallon drum of D2 biological cleaning solution, mm -hmm. uh, which is very expensive. We're talking thousands of dollars for that. Um, but that allows us to um, hopefully clean as many stones as we possibly can mm -hmm. Um, with the number of volunteers we can get. We should be, we should have more cleaner than we have volunteers, which I, from what I understand has not always been the case. So um, yeah, we're gonna restore that. He's gonna be starting in the next couple of weeks to clean off some ivy and pressure wash and then start building some new door and shelving on it. So we're excited Great. about, about that. But we're happy to work with anybody. We had some volunteers there last week. Brenda, what do you think? Maybe as young as uh, kindergarten or first grade that yes. came with some parents oh, helping to nice. scrub and, and clean off the, um, you know, the, the, the headstones that have some growth and algae and lichen I, and things on it. I had a little girl come with me and I picked up sticks with my reacher first mm. and she came around and helped pick up sticks too. So anybody. Great. It's an immense uh, property. It, it, you know, it, you, you have literally 22 acres of, of, uh, of maintenance. And uh, very unforgiving. It, yeah, <laughs> maintenance. Un un yes. And one of the things that I think we can yeah. appreciate is we have some marble mm -hmm. and and some uh, granite features on our uh, courthouse property mm -hmm. that we you know I know what how, how weather degrades and and, and deters uh, beauty through you know having to maintain that and I can't imagine having literally thousands and thousands of, of, of headstones to uh, to, to, uh, to keep up so you are doing an amazing job out there with uh, with the resources you have and this is an opportunity for us to raise awareness for the community mm -hmm. to come out and not only help you with sweat equity, but also with uh, with real dollars, and I think that's really what 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 it's going to come to is you're going to need a capital campaign to help 
you know maintain this facility and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's a it's a historically and you know culturally it's it's a big part of who we are in the Belfont area so and yeah. Center County area I mean, mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. what the governor's governors uh, yep former uh, many lawyers that have worked here in the courthouse uh, we have how founders of Penn State. Yeah. Do we do we have Revolutionary War veterans that are yep. in there? Yeah. We do have Revolutionary War. We have Civil War. We have Medal of Honor recipients. Um, one area that we'd like to focus on, we've done a little bit of work with, but we'd like to see a little bit more initiative maybe this year uh, and going into next year is uh, our Soldiers Circle. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of stones there that have already been repaired and the repairs maybe are failing um, or just we've outlived those repairs so we'd like to see that area beautified and really uh, in, able for for the public to come in and visit and pay their respects so uh, you know we, we have more lists or more things on our to-do list than any of us can probably really uh, bring bring to to the fore because it's it's a very long laundry list of things but we're just trying to chip away we've been working very diligently in the last you know, a couple of years, especially uh, more recently, trying to, to make some, some headway. And we've heard a lot of positive things from the community. So hearing that is always gives you that little extra boost that you need to make the work Fantastic. happen. Well, thank you very much for coming in and letting us help you raise awareness for, uh, for the projects that you need to accomplish. I appreciate that. Thank yes. you. Thanks, Brenda. I know. Don't go away. Don't go away. No. Any questions from the press? No? All right. So we'll oh, take... We have one. Oh, we do have one. Just... Would I be able to, I'm with the CBT. My name is Jacob Michael. Would I be able to get your contact information before you head out? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Great. Sounds like there might be an interview. Um, all right. Unless there's anything else on the proclamation, we'll take a motion and then we'll present it. I will move to adopt Proclamation 18 of 2024, proclaiming April 2024 as Belfont Union Cemetery Month in Center County. I will second. We have a motion and a second to adopt Proclamation Number 18, proclaiming April as Belfont Union Cemetery Month in Center County. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And so what we'll do is if um, just Brenda up, could right? just come right up in front. Hopefully there's a meet. We'll just, yeah, we'll just meet up front up here. There. Yeah, yeah, we'll just meet right up front. <laughs> Now we'll uh, move on to our next proclamation, uh, Proclamation 19 of 2024, proclaiming April 2024 as Grange Month in Center County. Uh, we have uh, Lisa Butler, uh, Ralph Holman. Um, I'm, not, able to I'm not sure if he's but here, we have, but we have, but we have a, a special have a, guest. Yes, we have a, a, a very capable stand-in. Yes, yes. Would. Uh, Center Hall Mayor LaDon Young approached the podium. <laughs> Good morning, so LaDon. Sneaking in. Yeah. Yes. We would never let you sneak in. Well, thanks for coming. Um, uh, I know uh, uh, I'm a Granger. I think Commissioner Dershom's a Granger. We're putting some pressure on <laughs> Commissioner Concepcion to become a Granger. Um, let wonder the record show Mr. Dershom is a life. Member oh. of Grange. Yeah, wow. Something me. Other I outrank you. <laughs> you do. Life <laughs> member. All right. I, uh, I'm just an annual <laughs> member at this point. Oh, well. <laughs> but uh, thanks for coming. And um, yeah, if you could uh, give us a little background on uh, what the Grange is and what they do in Center County. And I know there are multiple different Grange organizations here. <laughs> Ten. Twelve. Twelve. Oh, oh Twelve I didn't see that. One, Pomona. Pomona Grange. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Center County Pomona Grange is celebrating 150 years this year. Um, it was started and still kind of is a grassroots organization founded in rural living, agriculture, and community service. Um, that's kind of our three big things. We like to give back. We like to advocate for rural America. Um, one of the main things Grange was involved in many years ago was rural mail delivery. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And now our big push is rural internet, um, mm -hmm. internet connection in general, mm -hmm. but mostly for rural America. Um, nice. Like LaDawn said, there are 12 subordinate granges, which just means local granges. Um, and then we have one big P county grange, which is Center County Pomona, which is the host of the Center County Grange Fair and Encampment, mm -hmm. which I'm sure many of you enjoy every yeah. August. Oh, there's roughly 700 county members um, made up of the 12 subordinate granges. You do not have to live in the township or community that your grange is. Um, I live in Milesburg. I belong to Baileyville, but that's where my family's from. Um, we were started there 90 years ago. So, any other questions? Great. Well, I'm, I'm sure LaDon probably has something um, she can add. No, no, no. No? She's, she's done it well. She mm -hmm. has... We are here to, of course, celebrate Grange routinely uh, claims April as its month, mm -hmm. and we're delighted that you all are having us, uh, helping us celebrate uh, this organization. Started in 1867, and of course started in Center County in 1874. And so many of our Granges are celebrating their 150th year this year, and of course Grange Fair. Uh, we'll be back here in August asking you to proclaim August as Grange Fair Month, and we're celebrating 150 years. Which we would be very, very happy to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looking forward to it. Center County was only 74 years old when there was the first picnic. So uh, mm -hmm. the picnic grew as did Center County. Yes, and there is the, uh, the nine days a year when Center Hall is the third largest municipality Correct. in Center County by population. <laughs> Kind of like uh, State College becomes the third largest city in Pennsylvania during major football games. Exactly. Um, questions from the press uh, regarding uh, the 150th anniversary of the Grange in Center County. We'll be in touch later down the line whenever Grange Fair gets closer. Okay. All right. Lee hey, Dawn, would it be possible for you to give us a little bit of a sneak preview about the coming attractions of Ooh, the Great Grange Fair? Oh, asking for a favor fair. there, Steve. Um, as you, we will have the flyer out shortly. Um, we have some excellent entertainment. As always. Um, there is a, potentially we're in uh, going to be having a rodeo. Nice. Uh, we are working on, and uh, it is not uh, cemented in yet, but uh, we are going to have. Um, potentially a uh, tractor display, antique tractor display. Oh, right. uh, to celebrate, we are going to be taking pictures, and we are going to have, instead of cakes, you know, after COVID, yeah. now we do cupcakes. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will be having cupcakes to celebrate the birthday, uh, the 150th birthday, for, uh, for everyone, at the, or for those who care to come uh, at mm -hmm. the uh, grandstand. And then there is a wonderful documentary being prepared. You know, um, oh. in, for the 125th, we mm -hmm. had a documentary, WPSU did a documentary. Mm -hmm. And now this one is uh, done by someone who works with us. Okay. And so this, mm. there will be a documentary. We're showing that Sunday night, and it commemorates uh, the Great Rangers Fair. Nice. So those are part and parcel of uh, some of the things that we're, we're planning. Now, I don't want to spread rumors, but is there any chance that Aaron Tippin is coming to the Grange Fair this year. <laughs> you and your rumors. <laughs> Aaron Tippin isn't coming, and we're not having the mud rush. Aaron Tippin is coming. <laughs> all right, well, all right. We are not having I wanted fireworks, 1,000 canvas tents, and you want mm. fireworks? We'll put them over on the fireworks. other side. The you won't even, you won't, they won't even be in the neighborhood. The largest collection of draft horses outside of the farm show, and you want okay. fireworks. All right. Well, it's just a thought. Yeah. Fireworks. All right. You don't put them together. Okay. All right. I got it. I got it. <laughs> All right. Another great idea. Shot down. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. In its infancy, in, in yeah. the incubation stage. Oh, face it, you wanted the money, but you weren't interested in that. Or that, too. It's like they ran that through the safety committee. Yeah, Steve. they might have run that yeah. past somebody in responsible position there. <laughs> All right, a slightly more serious note. John, do we uh, have uh, something in the plans for perhaps some ice cream for some of our Grange Fair goers this, uh, this upcoming fair? We were going to propose to um, hand out the cups again. Oh, good. We always do that in celebration of, of Kitty's Day, yes. uh, Star Youth Day, and, and also celebrates uh, uh, dairy. Dairy, uh, yes. You know, that's uh, right. Center for you know, Pennsylvania's yep. number yeah. one mm -hmm. agricultural industry is dairy. And so we celebrate that. This is a way, of, as Lisa says, Grange itself uh, is agricultural awareness. And uh, mm -hmm. this is one of the ways to promote that. Um, when you talk about oak farmers, especially now, when, oh, we have to go slow because there's equipment in front of us. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. now, if you think of that equipment as the peas and the carrots yeah. and the, uh, you, you know, everything that you, food, fuel, fuel that you're mm -hmm. using. So uh, slow down and let that farmer get to that fuel. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, again, when you sort of say, well, agricultural awareness, well, here we have that a great deal. Could I put a, one more plea in? Uh oh. <laughs> you know, every year, every year, one of our favorite things, and I think you know Amber should be able to experience this, which she mm -hmm. hasn't yet, is the bake sale. Oh, oh that cost me so much money, it? Steve. <laughs> no, see, no. Oh. There's safety concerns. With once, once again, the right. hearts are breaking all across oh, the county. Hey, tell me about it. Well, you know what you need to do. Now you're going to like this. Take a little bit of time. Every year, they run a judges' school. Judges oh, have to taste. Mm. Judges have to taste. Oh, I have done right. that. There I feel you like go. I have there some you go. That's how you bring it Four years, Steve. Yeah. Uh, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. okay. Bring All right. a half a gallon of milk. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, we supply that. Oh, okay. We supply you didn't use still. But All right. judges, don't forget. Do you get a certificate yes. if you go through judges' school? Yes, yes you, you do. do. Oh. Okay, good. It All just right. takes a morning. Mm -hmm. And and you have to and, and judges school you have to taste. All right. It's okay. Torture. Torture. It is, uh -huh. and it's something that I could learn quickly though. There <laughs> you go. And then you bump and you can. Oh yes, you have to taste. Okay. Thank you. I'll keep that on my yes. list of things to um, do. This sounds Sign like us. a challenging duty, but Sign yeah. us up. <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised, Amber, when you're when you're tasting your 67th chocolate uh, cake. It's like, oh boy, <laughs> sugar rush. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Well, thank you. The Grange yeah, has all you. been an integral part of Center County mm -hmm. since uh, since long before any of us, and uh, we hope that continues for many, many generations to come. So, thank it you. It is for coming one in. of the longest and mm -hmm. oldest organizations yes. sure. in many of our mm -hmm. communities, and certainly in the county. Uh, and if somebody yeah. wanted to join the Grange, how would they do that? You can go online. Okay. There is an application there, and then mm -hmm. it would be forwarded to the appropriate. Um, again. Mm -hmm. Center County, we are fortunate we have 12 uh, local ranges. Okay. You can also get in touch with uh, any ranger, and uh, mm -hmm. I carry an application with me at all times. Okay. Prepare. Now. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Unless there's anything else on this proclamation, we'll take a motion. All right. Um, I will move to adopt Proclamation 19 of 2024, proclaiming April 2024 Grange Month in Center County. I will second that. We have a motion and a second to adopt Proclamation Number 19, proclaiming April as Grange Month in Center County. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed name. Motion carries. Come on up and we'll take the picture. We go back. Three of the officers must be. Oh. I just say, four of the officers. 
just the best one, but I, I don't know if that's true. They're Steve, all good. Steve, come on. Good luck, honey. They're Vic all the best. Vic was a great group, too. They <laughs> really tried. Did you see what he's doing? Yeah. Come on, make him try that. Well, there's a chance yeah. Baileyville might be a little closer for Amber. Mm -hmm. Definitely than it would be. some of the others. This might be my closest one. All right. So we're uh, about to move into contracts. Uh, perhaps if um, uh, Tom and Brenda want to check in with the press, I don't want to have to have you sit here for the next 40 minutes. Yeah, sure. <coughs> Just listening to contracts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, no. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks for coming. Thanks for what you do to keep that part of Belfont up, uh, mm -hmm. up on its maintenance. All right. So Thank we'll you. move forward with uh, contracts and authorizations. Uh, we'll start with planning and community development. And we have uh, Tanya Collins here uh, from um, CEDACOG for four items. Yes four items here. Good morning, commissioners. Um, I have for your consideration four subrecipient agreement um, amendments. And these four amendments are for two projects that are currently um, going on. One is for the uh, Belfont Borough Streetscapes project, and the second one is for the Penn Township Water Tank project. Um, did you want me to do all four of them at once? Yes, please. Okay. The first one is the contract addendum number one of the subrecipient agreement with Belfont Borough for the fiscal year 2020 community development block grant funds for the streetscape safety improvements. This is to amend the agreement termination date from March 2nd, 2024 to September 2nd, 2024, as approved by the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. The contract total is $88,112 for the period of March 1st, 2022 to September 2nd, 2024. The second one is the uh, contract addendum number one as well for the subrecipient agreement with Penn Township for the fiscal year 2020 community development block grant funds for the water storage tank rehabilitation project to amend the agreement termination date from March 14th, 2024 to September 2nd, 2024 as approved by the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development. The contract total is $202,067 for the period of March 14th, 2022 to September 2nd, 2024. The third item is the contract addendum number one of the subrecipient agreement, again with Belfont Borough, this time for the fiscal year 2021 CDBG funds for the streetscape safety improvement. This also amends the agreement termination date of that contract from March 2nd, 2024 to September 2nd, 2024, also as approved by DCED. The total contract for this is $96,977, and again for the period of March 1st, 2022 to September 2nd, 2024. And the final item, is a contract addendum number one of the subrecipient agreement with Penn Township. This is for the 2021 CDBG funds for the water storage tank rehabilitation project mm -hmm. to amend the agreement term termination date from March 14th, 2024 to September 2nd, 2024. Again, as approved by DCED, the contract total is $117,000 for the period of March 14th, 2022 to September 2nd, 2024. Thanks for covering that time. You're yeah, welcome. It just looks like the okay. projects are running a little behind schedule. They need a little more yes, time. Yes, we just to needed it to extend them. And uh, again, they were that was approved by DCED. So right, no correct. problems there. Any questions? Yeah. So this gives them the summer to work on finishing. These yes. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Sure That's good. All right. All right. We'll take a motion. Then. I'll move to approve the planning and community development items one through four. I will second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the planning and community development items one through four. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Uh, and now we have a fifth item uh, for planning. Uh, and the department head, uh, Ray Stolinas, will cover the uh, large state grant that we're passing through. Good morning, commissioners. Yes, um, uh, as you can see, we're here to this morning to ask for consideration of approval of the Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program, RACP engagement letter uh, for the Center Volunteers and Medicine Clinic construction uh, for the grantees authorized representative. The Office of Budget will be conducting an audit, performance audit on April 15th to evaluate the grantee and the subgrantees compliance with RACP grant agreement. Um, and determine if the incurred final contract amounts presented on the application for payment submitted to the Office of Budget are supported with required evidence and in compliance with the contract terms. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Higgins uh, 
stated it was a three million dollar RECP grant uh, for a total project of six million two hundred twenty eight thousand nine hundred forty dollars and that time period of the RACP agreement was August 29th of 2023 to August 31st of August 31st of 2028 um, I will be attending the performance audit on April 15th representing the county great well thanks for uh, attending Ray um, I know uh, representative uh, Paul Takak and I uh, were at their open house. They had a couple tour groups. Representative Kerry Benninghoff might have been there as well. Uh, and uh, I think in part due to this state grant, they finally reached the point where, where they no longer have a waiting list for dental services. Uh, that has been a list that has uh, at times had hundreds of people on it. Uh, and the waiting list has existed for many years. Um, so they're a great group doing wonderful things here in the county. Very much appreciate uh, the state uh, giving them a grant to put a big dent in their capital cost for the new the new building. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Concepcion, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, we've certainly experienced all the efforts throughout the pandemic as well in making sure they're providing, <coughs> you know, public health assistance throughout the community. They were an amazing partner in that sense. Um, and, you know, it's just critical that we have a place for folks who are uninsured or very underinsured and to be able to uh, access medical care. Just, and the fact that it's run by volunteers, you know, we're just really grateful to the doctors and nurses and dentists who are volunteering their time there. Commissioner Dershow? I think it goes without saying that without those volunteers, yeah. there'd be a lot of folks in our community that would be, you know, incredibly underserved. And mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for us to help them get on their feet and mm -hmm. get a new clinic gathered up for both dental and medical services. And I think it's fantastic of what you're doing. And I, I think their work is, speaks for itself. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for helping them make that uh, make that happen. I thank the commissioners for having our office involved with the RACP process. We've learned a lot through the past few mm -hmm. applications, yeah. and this was a meaningful project. Been in the facility, quite impressive. Yeah. And Center Volunteers mm -hmm. in Medicine serves anyone who lives in Center County or who works in Center County, mm -hmm. um, and as Commissioner Concepcion mentioned, who is uninsured or severely underinsured which unfortunately is thousands of people, even here in Center County. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the press on the grant? No? All right. Move forward with the motion then. I'll move to approve the Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program engagement letter for the Center Volunteers of Medicine Clinic construction. I will second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, Redevelopment Assistance Capital Program engagement letter with uh, CVIM uh, clinic construction. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Great. Thanks, Ray. And Thank you. Thanks, thanks for all the work your staff has done on that project. Uh, now, uh, move on to a department Steve was in trouble with a minute ago with the fireworks, uh, risk management. <laughs> well, don't put me in charge of that. Was good. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, con uh, on behalf of Krista, I'm here for the contract renewal with NDAA Insurance Services. This is in particular to their lawyer's professional liability insurance uh, that is provided to our Center County District's Attorney's Office. Uh, contract total uh, will be for June 6, 2024 for calendar for year June 6, 2025. Contract total is $30,515. That is a 1% increase from last year. Oh, very good. All right, any question from either commissioner on that one? It seems like a reasonable yeah. increase. Yeah. Thanks to risk management for keeping that cost yeah. within reason. I think we can take a motion. I'll then. move to add the contract with NDAA Insurance Services to next week's consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to add the contract with NDAA Insurance Services to next week's consent agenda. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Great. Thank Thanks, Natalie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Now we have uh, Tracy from uh, Records Management. Uh, for destroying some of the voluminous files that we have in your department. <laughs> yes, very many. So good morning. I'm here to ask for your approval for the destruction of some of those records from uh, a few of the county offices, not as many as previous, so that's kind of good. Um, it's the commissioner's office, conservation, controller, financial and management, human resource, um, MDJ Lockman's office, tax assessment, and the transportation office. They all have records that um, exceed the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission's guidelines, so now they can be permanently destroyed. Um, I went above and, and made a um, list of all these 
boxes and mm -hmm. records for each office to also mm -hmm. go over, approve, just to have another set of eyes on the destruction. So mm -hmm. now I'm asking for your approval. Great. We appreciate the work, Tracy. And uh, either we desperately need the space here at our records, records management building, or uh, if they're in storage with our outside vendor, uh, those uh, costs aren't cheap. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. Commissioner Conception, any questions? So there's legal guidelines around which we retain records, and when they are have exceeded some um, time guidelines, or depending on the content. Yes. Uh, yep. So. We follow the, like I said, the Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Historical Commission's guidelines, and they give us a breakdown of mm -hmm. the years of each contract. And yeah. And with that, we still retain a tremendous amount of records from the county offices. Yeah, there's still mm -hmm. a lot. And technology has been kind to mm -hmm. us too that we're able to transfer yeah. a lot of those records onto electronic format and maintain them that way. So yeah, hopefully mm -hmm. in the future we'll working on that and that'll that'll make it a lot nicer, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cost efficient. Two hundred okay. years of records is a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. two hundred and twenty-four to be exact. If you're talking about the yes. recorder yeah. of deeds and the <clears throat> prothonotary's office. Both of those mm -hmm. raw officers are very proud of the fact that they have documents that are well over two centuries old. Yeah, I'd say yes. probably the warrants in the uh, yeah. in the recorder's office go well beyond that too. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks. Okay. You're thanks. Let's see something will, else. Yeah, I'll move to add the destruction of these county records to next week's consent agenda. I will second that. We have a motion a second to add the destruction of uh, county records. I'll mention again that have exceeded their retention guidelines. Uh, to next week's consent agenda. All right. Aye. Oh, sorry. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 We're all, all in favor. Yeah. We're all yep. in favor. There, there we go. go. All right. We're in. Great. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks. All right. Uh, now we're moving on to capital projects. Um, John's got something involving um, potential parking lot. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, before you for consideration. Uh, is a proposal from Pentair Engineering in uh, conjunction with JG Contracting. This is the contractor that is uh, doing the uh, wall project as well at the courthouse, but they are uh, looking to provide engineering services associated with preparing concept plans for the optimization of the three parking lots that the county owns that abut uh, Penn Street. Uh, the three lots, again, are located on both sides of Penn Street between East High Street and East Pike Street in the borough, and uh, Pentera uh, is going to evaluate the parking lots, and they will assume that all the retaining walls in the three parking lots uh, can be either uh, altered, removed, or reconstructed. Uh, there's no design work that is proposed with this. This is basically just a, sch a schematic uh, evaluation to see what could be possible out there. Uh, as you know, the, the borough had uh, we reached out to the borough in the past and we reconfirmed that recently that uh, there may be uh, option to uh, abandon a part of Penn Street to optimize these three uh, parking areas. So before you, uh, for consideration, is the uh, proposal to have the engineering firm come out and see what may be possible there to not only uh, limit, possibly limit the use of those extreme uh, retaining walls, but also optimize the, the configuration of those three lots. Great. Well, uh, the hills in Belfont are beautiful, but it does involve a lot of retaining walls, and yes. mm -hmm. eventually those things degrade. So yeah, let's take a look at this and see what needs to be done mm -hmm. to keep those lots in service and maybe a little better organized. Uh, Commissioner Concepcion, any comments? Um, no, just yeah, knowing that we've got county properties there with these retaining walls are holding up the, the side of the hillside. We got to take a look at it so yes Mr. Dershow no it's all good and mm -hmm. I, I, I want to particularly thank Amber for well, and I guess I guess we we're all there yeah. but uh, picking the stamping on the oh, yeah. for the <laughs> yeah. Uh, for yeah. the retaining walls that we are building and, mm -hmm. and uh, Amber seemed to take a, a much more aesthetic view <laughs> of, yes. I was happy with just about anything that looked mm -hmm. close but yep. she was very very uh, very active and, yeah. and, and hopefully Thank picking you. out a great pattern for that and we can continue mm -hmm. that uh, architectural yeah. piece throughout that whole yeah. area hopefully it's going to look nice-ish and might be vaguely like um uh the park there along the river as well yeah mm -hmm. well, it looks think, yeah. nice 
I think that's you know that's kind of the centerpiece of the town. I yeah. think uh, you know we need to we need to maintain it and keep it mm -hmm. uh, keep it looking as it should for yeah. the next 200 years. Yeah, it mm -hmm. should be somewhat matching Talleyrand Park all the better. Yeah. Absolutely. And kind of maintaining the character of the area. Yeah. 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 Any questions cool. from the yeah. press on on that topic? No. All right. We'll uh, take a motion then. I will move to approve the proposal with Pentera Engineering Incorporated and JG Contracting Company Incorporated. We'll second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the proposal with Pentera Engineering and JG Contracting Company. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Pose nay. Motion carries. All right. Um, now uh, John has something under financial management. So moving a little further up the hill and down the other side to All the right. Centercrest project. Uh, before you for consideration is a uh, power service agreement with uh, the name, it's, it's through SRE, Solar Renewable mm -hmm. Energy, but mm -hmm. through an LLC called uh, Center County Phase Two Solar Partners uh, is to uh, construct, install, and operate and maintain uh, a 341 kilowatt uh, solar electric generation system, which would also include a battery backup system as well uh, for the facility. Uh, it is a 21-year uh, 20 service agreement with the first option to buy out the system in year six. Uh, essentially, this contract is almost mirrors exactly what we are doing at the uh, correctional facility. Mm -hmm. It's with the same company. Uh, the contract is of the same, uh, very little difference in, in the language. Uh, there is uh, no need to, to do the roof because we were proactive in that regard and we've replaced the roof mm -hmm. uh, as part of the overall center crest project, so nothing is needed there. Um, it will be an annual uh, service agreement and those will be monthly payments that are made uh, at the beginning of each month. So uh, we are seeking to add uh, this to uh, next week's consent agenda. Great, thank you, John. A brief overview. The Solar array at the Center County Correctional Facility has been one of the best financial decisions the county's made in decades. Uh, the initial estimate was it might save as much as $4 million over the expected life, and then it was $6 million, and now potentially it could be as much as $8 million. I know as a consumer, uh, I just got a large increase recently in what I mm -hmm. pay for electric. Uh, hopefully we can stave that off for a while at the county. And then in addition, at the Center Crest facility, we're just putting it on the roof. It's not going to interfere with anything. And uh, since we're kind of designing that building from the ground up, we were able to downsize the, uh, uh, what, were, what were we calling that, the electrical um, backup system? The, uh, oh, like the generator? The generator. We were able right. to downsize the generator, and that alone, uh, by putting the battery in place, <clears throat> almost pays for the project right there. And then in addition, that battery is going to be also something like a very large surge suppressor for the entire building. So yes. if there is some sort of electrical spike, uh, it will get stopped as it enters the building instead of being stopped individually at all the surge suppressors at the desks. Yeah, there could be um, a lot of unknown savings there yes. from uh, electric strikes or fluctuations or surges in power to the building. That would all be yeah. buffered, yes. Yeah, and it doesn't count the fact this time, I think the uh, grants available are even more generous than they when we, when we did the correctional facilities. So. Yeah, we're, we're looking at almost uh, f uh, potentially a 40% a uh, savings. That Those savings will go to the uh, system provider. Mm -hmm. However, those, are, those savings are reflected in our overall project cost. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so this is yet another case where um, the solar array is going to save the county a lot of money up front. It's going to save us a lot of money in the future. And uh, the expected life is probably a minimum of 30, probably 40 years. And even then, they still work. But we'll probably replace them with new technology at that point. Um, and it's not like the uh, array at the correctional facility is actually running about, what, um, uh, 8 or 10%, Richard, over the initial estimates, as I remember? Yeah. Yeah, generating quite a bit more power than they originally promised us. Um, Commissioner Concepcion, any questions or comments? Yeah, no, just that the, you know, the return on the investment makes sense here from a financial standpoint. It's really beneficial to the county. And, um, you know, we're seeing that because, you know, the county's a going concern that's going to be here for many, many decades, if not centuries, after we're no longer here, um, that it really makes sense to invest in our own ability to generate power. So. 
Commissioner Dersh? I, I just have one question. It, it's more of a when we measure the output of the of these mm -hmm. facilities, it, that that power runs through an inverter, correct? Yes. That's part of the process. No. Yes. Do we measure the, the, the power before or after the inverter? In other words, the inverter has a certain, mm -hmm. you know, jet, it, it, it uses a certain amount of electricity yeah. to operate the inverter. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering what the, you know, if, if we get a true feeling for how much power we're generating after the, in, the inverter. Is the meter before or after the, the inverter system? I believe the, I'll have to double check this. I believe the meter is after. That, that, that yeah. would be helpful to know. Yes. Yeah, when so. these things are sized, Steve, they usually are sized based on the amount of electricity you actually use. Well, I'm just wondering, yeah. th there's there's the actual amount. I'm talking about generated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, when, whether it's generated, yeah. before, it, it, whether it's measured before or after. Yeah. Number, I'm just mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn how yeah. this works. Sure. So. I'll yeah. have that for you next week. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank Pretty you. sure that I think it was a 1.7 megawatt um, facility for the um, uh, solar array for the correctional facility, that would be after the inverter, pretty sure. And of course, actually, it's generating more like 1.8 right now. So it's more power than the correctional facility needs. Okay. And I think we get a credit toward the Willowbank building on that. I believe our uh, electric bill from the prison has been running something like negative 35,000 a year, uh, which is a great place for the county to be. Um, questions from the press on the major project. Is this agreement being considered by other municipalities, or this is a separate? This is separate. I understand the confusion, okay. Gary. Right. Yeah. No, this is the um, Center Crest building has a flat roof. Uh, there were some leakage issues in multiple spots, so we upgraded the, the roof as part of the project. Now that the roof's been upgraded, we can put the solar arrays on top of that. Um, there's no um, what you call bolts that go through. Um, the uh, system is a combination of weight from the uh, uh, stands for the solar rays, and then I think some sandbags essentially there are, keeps it from moving. It's like a sled type system yeah. that'll that'll sit right on top of the surface. We actually put a special type of roof membrane on to uh, account for the system in the racking that will be up there. Yeah, this is a complete standalone uh, conversation. Yeah. Agreement titles are sort of similar. So they are. I want yeah. to make sure. Thank you. Both yeah. correctional facility and Center Crest accounts will not be a part of the solar power purchase agreement. Okay. I will uh, move yeah. to add the solar energy power service agreement to next week's consent agenda. And I will second it. We have a motion a second to add the solar energy power service agreement to next week's consent agenda. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Great. Thanks, John. Um, and thanks, Richard, for all of your work on uh, that project. Um, now we have uh, a contract from Human Services, and Julia will cover that for us. Good morning. Good morning. So the contract before you is approval for a contract by the name of Meeting Maker LLC. Essentially, this uh, is an app that would be used by our treatment court individuals. Um, one of the benefits to this is it would allow for individuals to attend meetings such as a 12-step meeting um, and not have to ask for signatures documenting that they were there so there's a higher level of privacy for that. Would also be able to um, submit a, a report at the end of the week so that staff could look to see um, what individuals had attended, if they were on time, if they were late, if they hadn't attended, and it's kind of a clear report in that manner. And so really this would just be a, an aid to helping um, in the treatment courts. The, the cost is $4,200, the state shares $1,700, and the county shares $2,500. The county share would be paid for with um, a blending of opiate settlement money, if the that was appropriate, or uh, intermediate punishment grant money, if that was appropriate, and then if none of those um, opportunities exist, then it would be used with either MH um, mental health or uh, drug and alcohol funding. All right, so Julie, it's basically an app. Sounds like it works with smartphones yes. as well. So if someone is at the right 
place at the right time and they say they're at the meeting, yep. they're they, at the meeting. Yeah, they swipe in and it would yeah. indicate what time they arrived and then what mm -hmm. time they, and they'd swipe out and what time they left. And of course, this is only for those participants that would be willing to do this and would right. feel more comfortable with this. Certainly yeah. mm -hmm. if somebody didn't have a smartphone or if this was something they weren't comfortable with, yeah. then they wouldn't have to do it. This just mm -hmm. provides another opportunity, um, like I said, for folks to not have to have the, you know, going up to somebody in a meeting and asking yeah. somebody to sign something to say they were there. Mm -hmm. the, the check and balance, though, uh, you can log into a, a Zoom meeting and, you know, click your camera off yeah. and go, yeah. you know, walk your dog mm -hmm. is there any way that, that so that, that i i think it compliance yeah this that so i think it utilizes like a fencing capability so it knows where you're supposed to be um and so when you sign in i think it it it's looking at where you're at geographically and then and and sure could you cheat the system yeah i mean you could probably find a friend to sign your card and not even attend the meeting right like i think there's there's ways around things. This is just a, another option for somebody who is is mm -hmm. genuine in wanting to do yeah. um, to and real. participate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know, like most colleges and universities are using these now for class attendance. Yeah. So. Great. Any questions from the press on the new software? No. All right. I'll move to add the contract with Meeting Maker LLC to next week's consent agenda. We'll second it. We have a motion to second to add the contract with Meeting Maker LLC to next week's consent agenda. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have a very short consent agenda. Thanks, Julia. Very short consent agenda. We have a motion on that. All right. I'll move to approve this week's consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve this week's consent agenda. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Um, now we have uh, a letter of support, and we have uh, Denise here from the Center County Library and Historical Museum to give us a little background. Yeah, come on and approach the podium. And congratulations on your recent award as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. And I just have to mention that it's also National Library Week. Oh, so, all right. Um, Very it's good. It's a fun week for us, but um, I'm coming to the commissioners this morning to ask you to submit a letter of support for our application to a Pennsylvania Broadband Development Authority grant application that has a very long name. Um, it's COVID ARPID money that's specifically designated mm -hmm. to community-based capital improvement projects oh, that, that will advance yeah. education, community economic mm -hmm. development, and of course, broadband initiatives. Okay. Um, we read through the guidelines and we think that the expansion of our center hall area branch library fits within the framework of this application um, of this grant project. And so we are working on the application. It is due um, April 20th. Um, it caps at $2 million and we are going for the full $2 million. Um, we have been talking about expanding the Center Hall Area Branch Library for at least six or seven yeah. years. Mm -hmm. We've done some community-based fundraising. Um, this past fall, we contracted with a library design consultant who actually did an expansion at the Union County Library um, outside of Lewisburg and he um, worked with our Center Hall area staff and with our administration, and we came up with a, a really nice design that's really going to push the library and give it more space and more opportunities for programming, for expanded services, expanded technology access. But we got a little bit of sticker shock when the price came in at about $2.5 million, um, which was a lot more than we had projected earlier. So this grant opportunity just kind of fell in our laps. Mm -hmm. And we are um, hopeful that um, the Pennsylvania Broadband Authority will look favorably at our application. Well, that'd be mm -hmm. that'd be wonderful, Denise. A great little library, and sounds like a wonderful use for the grant funding. Thank you, uh, yeah. Commissioner Concepcion. Any comments? No, it just seems like it does kind of fit really directly in with what that right. grant is trying um, to accomplish in terms of the Center Hall Area Branch yeah. Library has no separate um, meeting room space mm -hmm. so whenever we do literacy based programming or um, we have a number of tutors that work with us through the Mid-State Literacy Council mm -hmm. they just have to do all of this out in the middle of the library floor mm -hmm. so there's not a lot of privacy and not a lot mm -hmm. of confidentiality um, 
we also know that the HVAC system is outdated mm. and our utility bills are, are kind of high out there. And so this, what really came in high were the costs to tie in, to replace the older HVAC system with the, the expanded mm -hmm. um, system and then tie it all together. But basically the project will double the size of the um, center hall area branch. It'll go from about 2,500 square feet to mm -hmm. about 52. <coughs> square Wonderful. feet. Wow. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah. That, that yeah. sounds like a, a, a worthy project. And just keeping in the spirit of the Grange mm -hmm. Fair, you realize that during the Grange Fair, they have a library too. Yes, they yes. do. So there'll be mm -hmm. two libraries. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in and Center we yeah. um, have often, well, I shouldn't say often, um, back in the day when the bookmobile was running, we would run the bookmobile in the Grange Fair parade. Yes. And that was kind of fun oh, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everything you do for all the citizens of Center County, but hopefully this will directly benefit Center Hall. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, sounds like a great project and a great use for the grant funding. Any questions from the press on Center Hall Library potentially hoping, knock on wood, to mm -hmm. double its size? No? All right. Um, we have a... Um, Seen that request that John will handle. Oh, should we mean Take to approve? Oh, we need to approve yeah. this. Yeah. Yes. I'll move to approve the letter of support for the Center County Library and Historical Museum. I will second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the letter of support for the Center County Library and Historical Museum. All those in favor, do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right. And uh, John has a CNET request for us. Yes. Uh, before you for consideration is the annual sponsorship for the taping of the Rose Cologne Volunteer Dinner hosted by the Center County Council of Human services. The dinner is on April 25th at the Penn Stater Hotel and Conference Center. Uh, this dinner is the opportunity for all the human service agencies. There are over a hundred mm -hmm. in the county. This is their opportunity to recognize and volunteer, recognize volunteers or even a group of volunteers and say thank you for their their dedicated service. Um, th this uh, dinner has uh, provided the honoring of over over a thousand uh, folks over the years, and uh, it's typically 30 or 40 that are that are honored at mm -hmm. each each event. Yeah. So, before you for consideration is approving the uh, CNET sponsorship for the volunteer dinner. We we appreciate the thousands of volunteers who work with these hundred charities, um, and uh, many of them are close county partners. So, yeah. I, I think it's probably an appropriate uh, request, Commissioner Concepcion. Yep. Great. I'll move to approve the CNET sponsorship for the 2024 Rose Cologne Volunteer Dinner. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the CNET sponsorship for the 2024 Rose Cologne Volunteer Dinner. Uh, all those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. And Commissioner Concepcion is a somewhat smaller than normal check run. For yeah, us. so the check I'd like to recognize on this check run is a re relatively sizable check to Center Region Parks and Recreation. Um, the agency we partner with to provide the active adult center at the Nittany Mall. Um, so Center County Office of Aging runs that with Center Region Parks and Rec for anyone in, uh, who are seniors in Center County to take advantage of. And with that, I will move to approve the check run dated April 5th, 2024. We'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the check run dated April 5th. All those in favor do so by saying aye. 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 Oppose nay. Motion carries. Uh, John, is there an administrator's report? Nothing to report at this time. Uh, okay. Move back to uh, voter registration, which uh, Commissioner Concepcion is prepared to address. Yes. So um, as of um, today, our total voters registered in Center County are 101,043, which is up 72 from last week, um, which is probably because the registration, the the deadline to register to vote in the primary election was yesterday. Um, so anyone who wanted to vote in the primary election needed to have done so by yesterday, but there's still time to register to vote for the November election. So with the, in that uh, 101,043 voters, there are 42,284 Democratic voters, 140 Green voters, 601 Libertarian, 13,923 have no affiliation, and 41,069 are Republican voters. Um, all others comprise 3,026, the minor parties that are um, listed with us. And the one I'd like to recognize this week is the Constitution Party, and they have 15 registered voters, which is um, relatively large for one of the smaller parties. Um, and the precinct of the week 
is Precinct 51, Ferguson East, and they vote at the Ferguson Township Lions Park at 424 West Pine Grove Road in Pine Grove Mills. They have 1,577 registered voters as of the last election, um, and there were 750 ballots cast, making up a voter turnout of 47.56% in that um, municipal uh, precinct. And I'd like to just thank the Ferguson Township Lions for allowing us to use their facility. Great, thanks Amber. Uh, other announcements, uh, Tuesday, April 16th at 5 p.m. is the deadline to request an absentee or mail-in ballot for the 2024 uh, general primary election. Um, and the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting on Tuesday, April 23rd has been canceled uh, due to the general primary election. Uh, we're all gonna be pretty busy that day. Um, are there any executive sessions to report or hold, John? No executive sessions to report or hold. All right, and the remainder of our public uh, meeting schedule, um, in a few minutes, uh, we'll have our 11 o'clock uh, Board of Commissioners work session. Uh, on Thursday, April 11th, we have a Board of Elections meeting at 1. On Tuesday the 16th, uh, we have our uh, 10 a.m. Board of Commissioners meeting. And on Thursday, April 28th, we have the combined uh, Salary Board and Board of Commissioners meeting here at the Willow Bank at 10 in the morning. And uh, questions from the press that we haven't already covered. I have one question. I'll try to be quick since I know that this meeting is coming to an end soon. Um, I know that a couple of weeks ago, there was a gentleman in here from Milesburg Borough who was discussing about potential help that could happen with the boroughs. Um, I don't know how up to date y'all have been keeping, but things have drastically changed since he's been in there. Uh, now four of the seven council members have officially resigned in Milesburg, leaving only three left. Um, I didn't know that I was going to ask if this changes anything on the terms of what the commissioners could do or if it's still kind of like a non-county commissioner issue. I just was curious about that. Thankfully, I listened to the Tor Michaels radio show this morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And didn't the remaining um, borough council members try to appoint the rest of the board? Yes, I can kind of summarize what happened. Yeah. I was there last night. If you'd like, I can give a brief. Yeah, summary. yeah. I, it was, um, sounded like it was pretty crazy. At the beginning of the meeting was a little hectic, a little frantic. Um, there was a gentleman there, the same gentleman that was here, yeah. Bryce. Uh, he, there was a question yesterday that he raised about the meeting about potentially not being able to hold a quorum because they only have three of the seven members. I'm currently talking with some sources right now to see if the meeting that they did hold last night, yeah. all the actions that happened there were legal, if it was within the confines of the Sunshine Act. Um, but right now, that's pretty much the main question that's up in the air right now. They only had three of the seven. They kind of counted the mayor in as someone in like a like an emergency situation, but I don't know how legal that is. And I'm getting some feedback on that right now, like as we speak. Yeah. But I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts and see if there was anything that could have changed with this news. Sure. Well, the commissioners have looked into it, and we have found that there is a group within the Department of Community and Economic Development uh -huh. that offers mediation yeah. to municipalities in this circumstance. And unfortunately, in Pennsylvania, it has happened a number of times over the past dozen years. Uh -huh. uh, the one difficulty, though, is it's a voluntary program. Yeah. And so the um, whatever it would be the remainder of the board uh, in um, Milesburg Borough would need to agree, the majority of them to agree, to, to utilize the program. Um, so mm -hmm. we have looked into it, but yeah, unfortunately, uh, our solicitors done research. There's nothing directly that the commissioners can do, uh, but we have done some research on some state resources and mediation is an option, but it's voluntary. So great, great question. And thanks for the update. Well, thank you for giving me an answer. I appreciate it. And you're welcome. So if you have mediation, you would have the borough on one side. Is it a citizens group then? It would be. The it was, the other side it of the was day. more that right. they would provide um, advice and professional development in terms yeah. of how to move. And forward. would they require legal counsel? He was talking about here about a shortage of money and trying to hire lawyers. Does mediation require legal counsel from both sides? Um, you know? No, I, I believe, again, if the council agrees to it, uh, the way it would normally happen is DCED has staff that are familiar mm -hmm. with these issues. Uh, they would uh, have a couple of community meetings. Uh, I believe, uh, I think during the second community meeting, they would then ask for people who want to volunteer 
to be council members so they get back to a quorum and then um, you know DCD would work to make sure that everyone was filling out similar applications that the process was following the municipal code uh, and then mm -hmm. I believe the remaining um, council members would then pick new council members based on an open transparent public process that would take weeks is that roughly right and if there was yeah. any difficulty in the, for the council in doing so the president judge of the county would be yes. the one who would appoint um, yes so the president judge would then certify those appointments and verify mm -hmm. that the process followed municipal code yeah. and one of the sorry one of the things that the folks from Dep department of community economic development <laughs> emphasized when i was speaking with them is this is far from a unique case that this has happened. They've seen situations like this in municipalities throughout Pennsylvania, and so they have a lot of experience working with some of these difficulties. Mediation in theory would be different than if a group of citizens filed a suit against the borough? Yes, first of all, it would be a lot faster. Uh, the process would take weeks instead of months or even years, uh, and hopefully it's also a bit less contentious um, because everyone is agreeing with the mediation, it's an open process. Anyone who's a resident of Milesburg who's 18 or older, I believe they might have to be registered to vote, but definitely 18 or older could apply. Uh, and then that uh, those applications would be gone through in public. And again, at the end of the process, the president judge uh, for the Center County Court of Common Pleas uh, would then approve the, uh, the applicants. So um, I think it would be faster, a lot cheaper, um, and uh, hopefully reduce the temperature a bit in, in Milesburg. Besides the gentleman who was here two weeks ago, have you heard um, requests from assistance from any others in Milesburg? I've had a couple of people say that they're hoping the situation improves, but not anything in particular. Because unfortunately, as we've discussed, the commissioners don't really have a role to play here directly about the only person who would have a role is is going to be the president judge so great questions on that good update any any other we questions heard from the we heard from the center hall library that word broadband ordered on when we get the next update on broadband expansion here in center county yes i actually again was on the tour michael show this morning and we spoke about it um I believe the Commonwealth round, which was roughly $200 million of broadband financing, um, they're hoping either this month or next month to announce those grants. Now the commissioners have uh, four applications in uh, between, uh, I think it was Black Bear Fiber and Comcast. Do I have that roughly correct, right? Um, we're hoping hopefully maybe to get at least one of them. Uh, and then there's the much larger bead round, which is almost $1.2 billion in Pennsylvania. But I believe just a few days ago, they entered a 90 day challenge period, which we'll probably cover at a future meeting. Um, and then after that process is completed, uh, there's another round or two, and hopefully we could be turning in applications for the bead program. Kind of wish Liz was here. Would that be if roughly in the fall, Ray? I believe so. Yeah. So there is progress, uh, Gary, but yeah, unfortunately at this point, not shovels in the ground. I understand from where you live, you'd, you'd like to see some more progress on this. You're saying this Tor Michaels guy has some kind of show here or something? Yeah, he has some kind of show. It's pretty popular. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And any questions? No? All right. Looks like we can uh, take a motion to adjourn that. So moved. Second. We have a motion a second to adjourn at 11.08. All those in fa favor, do so by saying aye. 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 Pose nay. Motion carries. Oh, your ears must have been burning, Liz. No, I was waiting out there for my turn. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, we'll adjourn here for a couple of minutes, and then we'll uh, move into our work session.